This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We talked on yesterday's show about how good the college football slate is this week. And the NFL slate, not quite that good, but it's still pretty dang good. Two huge games here this week. We got Bills at Chiefs. We got Cowboys at Eagles. And we're going to break those down, get you set from a betting perspective for NFL week number six with Tom Vecchio picking his brain on some of this week's big matchups and his favorite bets at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check out Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. He, of course, is a writer and a podcaster and an editor for us here at Number Fire. Ryan Williams out today and Monday as he is unpacking after his move. Ryan back with us uh, potentially next week or the week after to talk more about uh, some betting angles here. But, Tom, excited to have you on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, we have another week of NFL uh, hockey star the other day. I watched five hockey yeah. games last night, two MLB postseason games last night. It's a, It's a good time to be a sports fan. And NBA regular season begins next Tuesday. Next right. Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Yep. Next Tuesday, two games. Okay. <sighs> to pay attention again. Um, because I like if I like analyze like my DFS like ROI, I have a better ROI in basketball than I thought I did. And so I'm like, optimally I should be playing more, but I also like I get tired. Yeah, and I don't want to a sample pay size thing. Yeah, but like I just don't want to pay attention. And it's like, uh, I could. So when I have you on Monday to talk Monday Night Football, maybe we can talk some uh, NBA op- opening night too. Squeeze yeah, that in too. Yep. Okay, looking forward to that. Before the, that, though, we got to break down NFL week number six. As mentioned, we did uh, have our college football week seven podcast with Dr. Ed Fang and Ben Stevens of Sports Grid swung by to talk about. Um, we got Big Ten Ben on to talk Michigan uh, versus Penn State. We talked Alabama, Tennessee with Oklahoma State, TCU. Broke down all those games and Ben's and Ed's favorite bets of this week. Find that over on the FanDuel YouTube page, but also here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. And make sure you are subscribed on your preferred platform for consuming Covering the Spread. Twisted T and FanDuel have joined forces to bring you a one of a kind contest series. Gives you a chance to compete for your share of thousands of dollars in a site credit. Introducing Twisted Tees College Football Picks, a sports betting focused contest series that's entirely free to play. The contest is simple. Each college football game will be assigned money line, spread, and total markets with assigned points each market. All you have to do is make six selections based on those three markets and earn points for each correct selection you made. If at the end of the day, your score ranks among the best in the contest, you'll be eligible for your share of site credit. Head to FanDuel.com slash Twisted T picks and make your picks. And remember, please drink responsibly. Now, Tom, before we talk about these games, we haven't had you on for a non-prop show for NFL just yet. So I want to pick your brain and kind of get a, a read on your style with the more traditional markets in the NFL. Which non-prop markets are you typically targeting most in the NFL, and why do you think those are your best markets? Yeah, I think NFL markets are super efficient. I think that we would all agree that they are probably the most efficient sport, and everything comes down super tight. The spot that I would go to most often is, it's probably totals and it's probably unders. I've been betting uh, a lot of unders this year. I also think that live betting offers a ton of value. Uh, so I, I stick with unders. I also think that it's easier in theory, in my mind, to hedge out of depending. You know, if you're watching the game, you can kind of just hedge out to break even. Uh, so I generally start with unders and then I kind of double down, triple down on uh, that as I did most uh, Bengals Ravens the other night. I was uh, Sunday night. I was on under 42, uh, live betting under 40, under 38, under 36 and a half, and it ended at 36. So uh, that's where I generally go. I, I find my spot and I just hammer it. Uh, not to root against you, but I wish that game had gone over because I did the Bengals money line in that game. They covered plus three, but I kind of right. wish they had scored that touchdown on that one drive. Uh, I was okay with Zach Taylor um, actually like going forward and forth now because like ah, I don't really want to go to overtime. I don't want to press my luck. So will you bet the them on the spread and the money line on the team on the same week? Uh, typically, no. I try to go with whichever number I have the most value in. For this year, it's been a lot of money lines. Uh, actually, for this week, I have not bet a spread. Um, okay. I have not bet a single spread. And part of that's because, like, 
my money line model is getting better closing line value and better results right now. So it is based on that. So I try to like tailor it towards where I'm having like, so for, for baseball this year, my money line model to start the year was trash. So I kind of abandoned it for a long time, retooled it entirely at the all-star break. And then it started to back test a lot better. So I went from doing primarily strikeout props to primarily money lines the second half of the year, because it was just performing better and I was getting better movement on those numbers. So for me, it really depends on where I'm getting better movement and Honestly, this year, even betting unders on totals, you're probably getting pretty good movement because they've typically gone down as the week has gone along. Right. And there's just so many injuries. And, you know, everyone says, oh, beginning of the season, these offenses start off a little bit slow. You know, we're a couple weeks into the season, but we're still seeing some inefficiency and just, you know, kind of just a, a, a lack of solid play. Like, there's no other way to put it, like a lack of solid, off, consistent solid offense yeah. from a lot of teams. And I think the unders leads to that. So, yeah. you know, I don't want to say, like, I'm, I'm – shooting for the unders to then live bet and try and middle trying like that's not what i'm aiming for just like i really think that we are seeing some overall bad offense right now well it's weird because like we we trashed this quarterback class rightfully so the entire offseason and now we got bailey zappy potentially starting again skylar thompson is starting uh or kenny i don't know mitchell trubisky kenny pickett uh is, is starting as though? well i mean sam howell might start a game at some point this year right. so i mean it's uh you know it's quarterback play is not great um but let's talk about some great quarterback play and talk about the Ravens, the Giants, obviously referring to St. Daniel Jones, uh, not Lamar Jackson in this game. Uh, but the Ravens six point favorites here. Total is 44 and a half. And hey, I mean, despite Daniel Jones having some blips, some injuries, the Giants have overcome some pretty tough opponents so far this year. Baltimore is real tough, though. Lamar playing arguably the best football of his life right now. Can the Giants do it again and cover here against Baltimore? This is a team I've been struggling with all year because mm-hmm. at face value, you look and say, okay, the Giants aren't good. They're four and one. They're covering some games. Then I, I look at the games that they've won. They've won these four games by a total of 17 points combined <laughs> for these four games, you know, an average of just over four points per game. Um, and, you know, looking back on some of these games, it's like we're looking at these games that are literally one possession. If one turnover or one yeah. thing goes the other way, they're all of a sudden losing these games instead of winning by, you know, one, two, three points, they're losing these games by six or seven. So in my mind, I'm waiting for the pendulum to swing back in the other direction. And the giants are four and one and the Ravens are three and two this season. Yet the Ravens are on the road and they're still six point favorites, which, you know, was five and a half yesterday, moved up to six today. So the market or, you know, the bookmakers still don't believe the giants are actually that good. And this pendulum is going to swing back the other way. The Ravens are coming off of, I want to say two kind of slowish games. You know, last week against the Bengals, it's a divisional games, lower scoring to be expected. The week before that with the weather versus mm-hmm. the Bills, you know, I'm expecting a big Lamar game. Like he hasn't had like a, a huge, huge Lamar game in a couple of weeks. So combine that with the Giants, I want to say running a little bit lucky right now. Mm-hmm. I'm on the Ravens this week. That's the spot I would initially lean. I would say the over-under is super tight. Both teams are two and three to the under this season or two and three to the over. So three unders for them. Um, I wouldn't go there. I would, I prefer the Ravens at minus five and a half. Of course, moved to six now, but yeah, I'm, I'm tempted by the total over 44 and a half. Uh, yeah. because if I look at like my projected offensive efficiency for this game, it does, I don't have a total market, a total model. So it's not saying like, Hey, it's at 46 or whatever points. Um, but like, it does say this game could be decently efficient and it's not just the Ravens side that it expects to have somewhat a decent game like it's also not super super low on the giants in part because they've been efficient because they've been like saquon barkley's been bananas effectively if you break off chunk gains it's not inefficient to run the football it's actually very smart so can they keep getting those chunk gains because if they're not getting the chunk gains then it just drains clock to run the football so do you think that saquon barkley busting off big runs is sustainable like kind of um, it's not entirely fluky, I wouldn't say, based on the way that he runs, based on how good he is. Um, so I don't think it's totally outrageous. My numbers do have Baltimore favored by 4.17 points here, which does it does say there is value on the Giants side. I'm not betting it. Um, there's value in the money line as well, plus 205. I can't get there. Um, my 2022 only model, which ignores all preseason priors, has Baltimore like second in the power rankings uh, behind just Buffalo, um, which I think is a little bit high based on the way their defense is played. But I think that's enough to talk me out of 
the Giants in this game, despite the fact my numbers are showing a bit of value there. I'm just a little bit worried about if Saquon comes back to earth, which he might not again, because he's very good. Um, that's my concern. there. But it's also him independently not coming back to earth. I think we can separate from the Giants as a team right? coming back to earth. And again, covering all these super close games, winning four games by a total of 17 points, I think is again, if they're running lucky right now and, you know, yeah. new coaching staff, good for them and all. Like they're having an awesome start to the season. I think Dave Ball's in the conversation for coach of the year. Like oh, yeah. that's all great. But in reality, that's going to swing back in the other direction at some point, even if Saquon continues to be very efficient. Yeah. Uh, Mike Kafka, coach of the year as well. We'll get him in there. Go Cats. Uh, let's move on to the second game of the week. That is the Bills at the Chiefs. Bills, two and a half point. Actually, did this move to three? It might be. No, it's still two and a half. Okay. It's still two and a half right now. Uh, total is 53 and a half in this game. Bills are favored on the road in Kansas City. Uh, it's a pretty big endorsement of how the market views this team as they have the entire offseason. This is not a new thing to have respect from the market. Is that respect too much in a super difficult spot against the Chiefs? I don't think so. And I, I think that, you know, you kind of hit on it. Like all offseason, the Bills were the betting favorite for the Super Bowl. They're the betting favorite for the AFC. They still are. The Bills are almost, uh, you know, $3 favorites ahead of the Chiefs when it comes to the Super Bowl. So I think that this, you know, one one uh, possession game, two and a half points is good. The The Chiefs looked obviously good last week when, it, when everything was said and done, but they didn't look great to start. And the Bills have been consistently good throughout the year. So two and a half points. If it closes at two, I'm not going to be surprised, but I do think the Bills should be favored very slightly. And this is a game with a 53 and a half over under that I am going nowhere near the under. This is one of the <laughs> this is one of the spots that you know I have a lot of like I guess internal theories that I, or internal policies I guess you could say that yeah, I operate sure. on for betting. And when it comes to Mahomes or Josh Allen, you know, cross sports with a, a player like Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mm -hmm. Whoever it might be for these players, it's like I take the over or I simply stay away. Sure. I'm not fading Mahomes. I'm not taking right. an under on Mahomes passing yards. I'm not taking an under when Josh Allen and Mahomes are going head to head. So I would either bet the over or simply stay away. Like you don't have to have action on every game. A stay away is a good play. Stay away is uh, <laughs> not minus EV. That's for sure. Right. Yeah, I, I think that for me, I, I kind of. I'm on board of that in terms of the total. I actually kind of like the Chiefs in this game. And by kind, I mean, I actually like them quite a bit. Uh, I have the Chiefs favored by 1.49 points in this game um, based on my traditional model, the one that I actually do use. Uh, so that means I like the money line a lot at plus 124. If I look at my 2022 only model, which again, I use just because it's kind of like a cross check to make sure my priors are not weighing things down too much as we get into week six now. My 2022 only model, like I said, does to the Bills first in the power rankings. It does like them. It does favor them in this game, but it's by just 0.81 points. So to me, directionally, both those are saying I should bet the Chiefs. So I did take their money line. I was plus 130 on Tuesday. I don't think it's going to move a whole lot from plus 124. I feel like it's probably going to stick there for the most part. But I just I think that the Chiefs are being a bit undervalued in this game. I know the Bills defense is outrageous. Like they can generate pressure without blitzing, which is such a key thing to have. Um, I know that we saw Gabe Davis finally get going this past week. The Bills haven't had to play four quarters outside of two games for this year because they've just been blowing people out for the most part. But I still feel like there's value in the Chiefs. Do you feel good enough about the Bills side to lay the two and a half? Or is it more so just talking yourself out of taking the Kansas City side? I, I think it's the latter. It's just taking, yeah. you know, talk myself out of that. I will say, bring up this one point I think is, is good for a larger discussion. If you like the Chiefs in this game, I think that there's value to bet on them for the Super Bowl or the AFC because that number is not going to stay the same if they were to win this game. So if you like the Chiefs, the Chiefs are not going to be they're, they're plus 650 to win the Super Bowl right now. If they beat the Bills as underdogs, the Chiefs are not going to be plus 650 to win the Super Bowl at the end of this game or, you know, come next Monday morning, whatever. So I think that's a, a way to look at the, the larger picture as well, because we started this conversation saying the Bills have been, uh, you know, the betting favorite the whole offseason for the Super Bowl. So if you're going to be on the Chiefs for this game. You should probably look to correlate that or be ready to correlate that, whatever you know your plans are if you bet on 
uh, you know, futures, the AFC Championship, yeah. Super Bowl, whatever it is. Like, you would agree with that? It's an inflection point. And right. an inflection point is where we'll see a big shift in the market. And that will be after this game, whether it be the bill shortening or the, the Chiefs shortening. So I think that there is value in that regard. Uh, Chiefs right now, plus 350 to win the AFC Championship. Uh, Baltimore, plus 750. That's somewhat intriguing i would say as well the bills are plus 180 i can't find any value there no. like that is absurd uh the bills plus 370 win the super bowl um the eagles actually the shortest team in the nfc at plus 700 i right. still like the bucks a decent amount of plus 950 despite how weird they've looked um but i think that viewing it from that perspective getting ahead of inflection points or Sometimes staying off inflection points, like maybe you think the Chiefs can win the AFC, but might not win this game. Having the the patience to wait and maybe grab them after this, if you think that okay, the Bills win, but I like the Chiefs long term. So I think that just being aware of inflection points is the key, right? And and this is this is uh, you know kind of one of the theories you know I bring from DFS or what you used to use in DFS is when it comes to injuries, it's like. If then what happens? Like if this player is out, then what is going to happen? It's like okay, if the Chiefs win, what is going to happen to their number? Like their right. number is not going to be six fifty. If the Bills lose, that number might drop. That could go to you know four thirty, four fifty something, and that okay, I'll jump back in on the bull. Uh, excuse me, the the Bills at that point. I don't want them at plus three seventy. Right. And I think that that discussion about shopping for futures and recognizing um, inflection points is a key one for our third game this week. That is the Cowboys at the Eagles right now. Eagles six and a half point favorites. Total is forty two and a half, and the Cowboys are four and one, but they're also plus three hundred to win the A or the NFC East. Like I get it because the Eagles are six and a half point favorites here. They are five and zero. Oh, they've got this absurd record. But like you know, if you think that the the Cowboys are live here, that could push interest that direction. Now the Cowboys seem like they are likely to start Cooper Rush again this week. They have wildly exceeded, exceeded my expectations with Cooper Rush uh, so far. Can they do it again and cover here against one of the league's best teams? It comes down to me for this game. Comes down to one thing: will the scoring be under control for the Cowboys. So the Cowboys are one in four to the over the season and their defense is great. And I don't think there's a, a surprise to anyone, but they're winning games based on their defense where Cooper rush really doesn't have to do a whole lot. You know, I, I don't like the term game manager. I think that's, it's kind of like a knock against quarterbacks who legitimately are some of the best in the world, but sure. it's kind of what they're doing. And they're winning via their defense. And it's, you know, credit to them. They're playing to their strength. They have a backup quarterback in there who's not as good as Dak. But they're they're covering these games. They're winning these games because of their defense. And their offense kind of just does just enough. So if they can keep the the scoring under control and hit yet another under this season, they can cover this game. They might lose it. But if this game gets out of control and hurts and the Eagles offense runs wild, they're going to lose this game by a big margin. They will not cover and the game will hit the over. So for me, it all comes down to their defense. Do I can Cooper rush? If this game turns into a shootout, like Cooper rush is not going to out no. Jalen Hurts. That's what it comes down to, right? Like if this game turns into 30 plus points from the Eagles, the Cowboys can't keep up with them. That, like that, that's it, all, it comes down to their defense and, I would side with the Eagles in this one. I think that Hurts has been too good. I think A.J. Brown uh, has has waiting for a huge breakout game. He started off the season super high. He's been a little bit quiet the past few weeks. Uh, so that's what I'm expecting from the Eagles. A lot of points from them. I would lean towards the over, which is not something I'm doing very often. As I said, at the top of the season, I don't think Cooper Rush can keep up with Hurts. Yeah, I think that that's kind of the the tough part of this because my numbers do like the Cowboys. Uh, they like them plus six and a half. I prefer the money line at plus 235. Uh, that has moved pretty heavily towards the Eagles, so it could continue to move. So if you like the Cowboys money line, maybe don't take it yet. Uh, see if that number keeps on going the other direction because people justifiably love the Eagles. They should. They've been amazing. Like They should love this team for sure. But the Cowboys have played well. You mentioned the defense. They've been very, very good. And the offense hasn't been bad enough to lose them football games. The question mark is, can an offensive line that I think has been pretty good of late, they don't have the best personnel right now, I don't think. Can they duplicate that against an Eagles team that has caused havoc for a lot of teams? So I think that's the biggest question mark there. Now, if you want to um, potentially play into the things that Tom was discussing, you were talking about how 
if you're looking at this Cowboys team and you think that they cover, it's basically saying you think it is a low scoring game. Right. I think that's a situation where you take a look at, like I don't do a lot of same game parlays because it requires me to find two bets in the same game where I show value, which doesn't happen all that often. Uh, but I think that those two actually do tie in pretty well. If you were to pair those together, the Cowboys plus six, six and a half under 42 and a half, that's plus 243 at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. I think that's a situation where you could you could take a look at that or the flip side, like Tom said, you lay the six and a half of the Eagles and take the over. So again, not a big person in terms of same game parlays, but thinking about the way things interact like that. Cause I think that if the Cowboys do cover, it is what you said, where it is a lower scoring game because that defense beasts out and kind of keeps things in check. Right. And and you have to take a step back and look at it and saying what happens. Like, what's going to happen to cause this game to hit the under? Like, right. well, okay, that would mean that the Eagles offense isn't doing a whole lot. And, you know, overs obviously in, uh, indicate that there's, like, some variable that is unaccounted for, something that, that's happening out of the norm or, or it, it, expectations are being exceeded. Yeah. So, hypothetically, if Cooper Rush passes for 250 yards, he's doing so because Hertz is also passing for 300 yards. Like, right. Cooper Rush isn't passing for 250 yards because that's not their game plan with him. Right. So when you take a step back and say, okay, what's the actual game flow or what are we expecting from this? What are the, like, what's the deviation? What's the, the 10% up? It's like, okay, well now Cooper Rush has to pass the ball 35 times a game because they're trailing. So I, I'm totally on board favorites uh, correlating that with overs and unders, taking the underdogs with the under, et cetera, et cetera. I'm totally on board with that. Yeah. Cooper Rush throwing 35 times is the worst case scenario. <laughs> like something has gone terribly off the rails if that happens. Uh, but I think that it, it should be a pretty fun game. And I think that hopefully it's a competitive game, not just because I have the Cowboys ticket. But anyway, let's talk about our favorite bets for week number six. Tom, when you look at the board right now, what are your favorite bets at FanDuel Sportsbook? Uh, one that jumps off the page to me uh, would be the Bengals minus one and a half on the road, taking on the Saints. Uh, the Bengals are in need of a bounce back game. Obviously a bit of a slower start to the season for them. Uh, T Higgins is still dealing with an injury, but it really comes down to the other side for the Saints. And they just have so many injuries. And it would, it's going to be James Winston, Mike Thomas, Chris Olave. Like they are super banged up and, this is kind of looking like a bit of a get right spot for the Bengals after seeing their defense really get torched last week by the Seahawks. Uh, the Saints, that is. This is a spot for the Bengals to, you know, kind of push their offense downfield, pick up a win against what is ultimately a very banged up Saints team. So that's the first spot. The second spot would be the Vikings on the road, minus three and a half. They looked good last week. I don't want to say great. Uh, but going up against, you know, potentially third string quarterback for the Dolphins, kind of them to, you know, get on the right track with their new passing offense, um, kind of just, you know, flex their offense muscles in their passing game. So those are the two road favorites are the spots that I'm initially looking. Yeah, uh, the the Bengals won minus one and a half against the Saints. Uh, Jameis did get back to practice Wednesday, but n like you said, no Olave, no Thomas, no Jarvis Landry. Marshawn Lattimore is also banged up. And if you're going to have... I think T Higgins will play uh, based on what they were saying about him on Sunday. That was annoying. I had him in uh, Thursday through but Monday. But losing him is less of an issue than Jamar Chase. For the than, than losing Marshawn Lattimore, Michael Thomas. Right. Yeah. Just Chris like Olave. even if even if he doesn't play at all, just and uh, Taysom Hill's dealing with a shoulder thing. I think he's got a rib injury. Yeah. He's injury. Uh, he's a little bit banged up too. Um, so it's just it less just... of importance compared to the Saints injuries. Right. If I have this game straight up, like if before I put in. Michael Thomas and Olave. I think Thomas Schefter said he's going to play this week. Adam Schefter of ESPN, obviously. I don't know why I had to clarify that. <laughs> Schefter said that uh, Michael Thomas is probably going to play this week. I have him in right now. If he were to sit, I've got this at exactly like even, an efficient market right now, 1.5 favoring the Bengals. If you take out Michael Thomas or Chris Olave, that's going to show some value, at least a little bit of value on the Bengals side of things. So I'd agree with that one there. I have the Dolphins-Vikings game. It's at... Uh, I have the Vikings there by 3.39. So pretty efficient number there, but that's in part because I still have it pretty high for Skylar Thompson, just because the infrastructure is so good, but Tyree kill is banged up. Um, that's secondary has some injuries. I think Xavier Howard will probably play this week. Uh, he was out the past week, but I don't want to bet on the dolphins with Skylar Thompson. So I think that um, I can't push back on either of those personally. I, I would also say the, the last one might be the Jags plus one and a half. Oh, oh buddy. Okay, Why? you're talking about buying futures markets right now. Are, Jags are you, are plus two forty. 
Oh, yeah, you yeah are. of course. I love the Jags. <laughs> Jags plus two. I'm not even hiding it anymore. Uh, Jags are plus 240 to win the AFC South. Um, I actually think that's a pretty good bet, too. Um, the Titans defense is hideous. Like, my gosh, they're bad. Um, I have, like, opponent-adjusted numbers. And, like, they're bad straight up. But when you adjust for opponents, they're somehow worse. Uh, so that's not great. They're on a bye this week. The Jags, I think, can win this game. So I've talked about my two separate models right now. My traditional model is uh, showing this as Indy minus 0.81. So not a lot of value in the spread at one and a half points, uh, but in about 0.26 in the points in the money line. If I go to my 2022 only model, which again, I don't trust as much because it has no priors in it, stuff like that. It says the Jags should be favored by like four points. So again, th- that's not something you should go based off. I do not trust that model relative to the other one, but you know, one model says it's sufficient. The other one says go Jags. So plus two forward to win the division. I kind of think the Jags are in play. So I'm not going to push back on that. I think that one's a great. I, I've bet against the Colts every week this year to mixed results. Um, I'm, I haven't done it yet this week and probably won't because I've lost some value on the Jags, but tempted still. What about the know? total? They are, uh, Indy is 0 and 5 to the total this, or to the over this season. Uh, I think if you if you think there are points in this game, just bet the Jags team total. I don't want I don't okay. want to have to root for Matt Ryan. To that's point. that's totally fair. That's totally Matt fair. Fryan. Uh, I refuse to have any any money tied to that dumpster fire of an offense. Uh, Jags team total pulling it up right now uh, over at FanDuel Sportsbook actually might not be posted yet. Uh, here we go. I was looking in the wrong uh, section. Jags team total twenty and a half over is plus one hundred two. So you. Don't get 20, which is kind of annoying, um, but you do get 21 uh, as being a key number there. So I, if I if you think there are points there, I would just go with the Jags team total because I don't I'm not rooting for Matt Ryan in the year of our Lord 2022. That's, that's totally that's a very fair conclusion to draw. <laughs> Do you want the money line or the spread for that Jags game? Um, I, I, they're actually I think they're both. I think the Jags can straight up win that game. The yeah. points are obviously safer. Yeah. Uh, the money line is what plus one. Plus, where's this one? Plus 112. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd probably shoot for the money line at that point. Plus Go 112. Jags, baby. Go Jags. This is a pro Jags podcast, and I am fully in favor of that. That is Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. As mentioned, Tom will be back with us on Monday to talk Monday night football. That is the, oh boy, it's Chargers and Broncos, which means I have to talk about Russell Wilson again. Thankfully, I have not bet the Broncos this week. I get to bet against the Cardinals and ignore the Broncos. Best case scenario, I am very happy about everything involved with that. Tom, I appreciate you, and I'll talk to you again on Monday. Thanks for having me. All righty, everybody. That is all that we have here for today. As mentioned, though, our college football betting podcast is up on covering the spread and the FanDuel YouTube page and our NFL prop betting preview with JJ Zachary. So will be up tomorrow, probably around 11 or so, 11, 11.30 on the covering the spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page. Get those wherever you uh, consume your content. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Enjoy Thursday Night Football somehow please uh let's go commanders get this money line ticket for me we'll talk to you all again tomorrow to talk about some props for week six this has been covering the spread right here on the fan duel podcast network 